Let me meet you, sir. Well, my name is Basi Akwa, by the grace of God. Um, the representative for Calamity Policy on my Federal Council in National Assembly. Okay. Sir, uh, sir, please, uh, what's the essence of today's meeting you just concluded inside, sir? Well, I had an invitation for a meeting of Labour Party stakeholders and I have to come because I'm also a stakeholder. And I also have to come because there's a problem in our party. So I felt that there's a need for stakeholders to meet to see how we can resolve the party. Because as we speak now, as we speak, uh, uh, our party is going down. So we need stakeholders to meet and see how we can solve this. And that's why I'm to, uh, that's why I'm here to encourage them to stand up and put the party back. So there is a proposed uh, national protest as bill for August 1st, 2024. What's the position as a National Assembly member? What's the position of the National Assembly as regard to the proposal? Well, for us, uh, we have appealed to for just one reason. <laughs> of the protest not going civil, for not going the way it has to go. We appeal to our people to do much of engagement with the government, our government functionaries and all that. We have appealed to them to shelve the planned protest based on the experience that we had in the last one. The last one, I mean, we had horrible experience and uh, we want, don't want to go through that route again. So we are appealing to them that shelving, yes, protest is your right, you are right to speak out on issues that they are not comfortable with because you are speaking out to the government. There is no problem about that. But the way and manner we see protests in Nigeria, you understand, is the way that we should be encouraged. So for me, uh, we are appealing to them to do more engagement with the government, dialogue with the government, and then see how this can be resolved. But it, it, or in alternative, I mean, organize it in a way, you understand, you know, organize it in a way. You know that to be civil, you know, it's not, it's not because uh, the last experience we had a situation where even protesters were inflicting pains on even the common people on the streets, were inflicting pain, and we've had that experience. The common people that you are seeking to save, you understand, they're inflicting, inflicting pains on them. So, and, and that's you know, the way to go. Engage with the government. Tell them what you want and let them see that. It's just like what Labour did with government. They engaged with them and at some point they had a middle position. You know, so they came up with some middle position. You know, so. so engage with the government and uh, table your issues you know, so, and let the government look at it. And at some point we'll be able to arrive at something that will be good for the city. Okay, so uh, with uh, the current uh, economic situation, the biting economic situation in the country, how do you how do you cope with the constituent? Because there's a likely up show of uh, pressures and the rest from your constituent. Well, uh, that's why we are saying I've said separately in national television the number of interviews that I have is that uh, we're not happy because again our work is suffering. As representative of people at the National Assembly, there's a lot that we need to do for the people. Our work is more of standing up on their crimes, standing up on their desperation, their concern. That's our work. That's what we need to do more. But because of, I mean, uh, how people are poor, the cost of living, the high cost of living, the high cost of transportation, the high cost of medical care, you know, and all of that. So we have a lot of problems. And, and, and then it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all good for us. And that is why we say that, look, we need to, you know, look at the cost of, and that was all I said in labor, I want to bring in, that the issue of, you know, having a living wage is not the answer. You understand? Because you can have a living wage today and tomorrow that living wage becomes something else. So what we need to do is that while we think of living wage, we must also think of reducing the cost of living, the cost of transportation, the cost of uh, care, the medical care, the cost of food. So we need to do it because if not, it will look like we are running around the circle. Uh, because what they increase today might not be something that is living tomorrow, so we need to increase it again. So we keep running. So we almost look at that seriously. Yes, sir, final question. Sir, uh, recently the Supreme Court gave a landmark judgment with regard to loose school government autonomy. And uh, as a legislator, we all, all on, uh, agree with you. Uh, we understand the fact that elections, if elections are to be held today, states where local government chairmen are not in place, these elections will probably be conducted by state uh, electoral committees and the rest. 
uh, don't we think uh, the problem has not really been solved because governors will still they are likely going to influence the process and still come up with their with their with their preferred uh, candidate as chairman. What is the National Assembly doing to solve that particular problem, sir? Well, uh, you are aware there's a bill which is in the floor of the House, you know, for the establishment of the lower government election commission. You are aware of that bill. That's 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 the step that we've taken so far. But again, I still don't want to generalize this uh, the issue of governors interference in lower government election. I don't want to generalize it because I've seen a governor that right in this world. The councillor of another party won. I've seen a governor in this country. I've seen a governor in this country that is some other government, you understand? That, you know, chairman of another party, a European party won. You understand? I've seen, so I don't want to say generally governors are like that. You know, there are some governors that have the face of human being. You understand? That will always want to do the right thing. Yeah, the issue of. Uh, you know, coming out with a bill to have a separate commission for the government election is because 80% or 90% of the governors, once you are a party of a, a particular state, you understand that the governor is of that party, all of the elective offices and the lower government will be won by that party, and that's why we come out with it. But I still feel that if some governors are given a chance, you understand, to conduct election, they will conduct it in a manner that everybody. You know, will 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 we'll feel a sense of belonging. You know, so everybody. Some governors are like that. So I don't want to generalize it on the issue of all governors. There are some governors, like I've said, some governors did so well, and I still believe there are still some that, if given an opportunity to conduct election, they will still do it better. Okay. Final question: Why duplicate agencies when we already have INEC that can still conduct these uh, local government elections? I, I keep, I keep saying yes. We must be careful because it's a problem. It's just like in the security. Yeah, you have DSS for security. You have army for security. You have uh, so many for security. You understand? When it's an army, there's an aspect of security that they need to handle. When they have police, there's still an aspect of security that they need to handle. When you have DSS, there's still an aspect. So, so also with election. You understand? So an election will require that. We must have different commissions to handle certain sections of the election. You understand? For the law of government, it has its own. You understand? So I still feel that there's need to, you know, have a separate body that should look at law of government election. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you sir.